Our first speaker is Dr. David Hamilton. Dr. Hamilton is a cardiology fellow at Michigan Medicine, and he is going to um, talk to us today about myocardial injury. Dr. Hamilton, the floor is all yours. Thank you so much. Um, it's a pleasure to um, talk to you guys today. Again, my name is uh, David Hamilton. I'm one of the cardiology fellows at the University of Michigan and excited to talk to you about troponins. Um, hopefully be able to answer some questions um, towards the end and to really try to clarify the complexity of, of troponins. Um, so with that, um, we're going to talk today about troponin basics. And then we're going to get into some definitions, um, some common terms, myocardial injury, ischemia, and infarction, as well as talk about some of the infarction types and then troponin leak. And hopefully this will be able to clarify some of the questions that have been coming up around troponins um, for the surveys that you guys fill out. So um, all of this information will be coming from the fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction, and there's a resource at the end if you're interested. So some very, very basic information about troponins. Um, you know, you look at the heart muscle and, and uh, narrow that down to the microscopic level, and you get to a, a series of proteins, um, one of which being the troponin. There are a couple of different types of troponin, troponin I and troponin T, um, that are used across the country in different ways. And um, these um, are part of the muscle within the heart. Now, this is important is when there is a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, um, the heart muscle releases the proteins and its contents and those troponin I and troponin T make its way into the blood. And so that's clinically why we test that is because it's a good marker of when the heart is damaged. So an elevated troponin tells you a few things. First, it's a marker of myocardial cell death or heart cell death, and it gives a poor prognosis that the higher your troponin, the worse off your prognosis is moving forward. There are a couple of things that make the troponin really interesting. The first is that it has a high sensitivity and the translation of that is it doesn't miss heart attacks. And so when there is a heart attack, this blood test is really good at making sure it picks out every single heart attack. The problem is, is that it's non-specific. And so it does collect all of the heart attacks, but it's collects people that are not having heart attacks as well, that have elevated troponins. And so context is really crucial in identifying why the troponin is elevated and if it makes, you know, if it's because of a new heart attack or something else. And so I'm gonna define for you three different terms. Unfortunately, they sound very similar and many times they're used um, in an overlapping way. Um, but the first is myocardial injury. The second is myocardial ischemia. And the third is myocardial infarction. So myocardial injury is simple. It's really just an elevated troponin. And an elevated troponin we define as a troponin that is greater than the 99th percentile. The URL um, stands for upper reference limit. So just a really high troponin. And every troponin assay is a little different in how it does. At the University of Michigan, we use the high sensitivity troponin T. And the upper reference limit for that is 19. Other centers use troponin I or uh, the old school troponin T's that the upper reference limit might be as low as 0.1 or 0.3. And so keep that in mind that um, these, these numbers certainly depend on, on what type of test you're checking. And so myocardial injury, the thing I want you to remember, myocardial injury is an elevated troponin. And this importantly can be a new process or an acute process or a chronic process. The chronic process um, comes from patients that have elevated troponins for a long period of time. They have an, a troponin of you know, 25 a year ago, it's 27 a month ago, and then you know, 29 today. Those are chronically elevated troponins or chronic myocardial injuries. These can happen for a few different reasons. One of the most common of which is high blood pressure, heart failure, or chronic kidney disease. And then acute myocardial injury is a myocardial injury that's new and happening kind of as, as you're seeing the patient or as the blood test is being taken. And that is, um, you can monitor for changes. So it's the troponin is 25, and then the next check it's 35, and the next check it's 100. That is an acute myocardial injury. Um, the term troponin leak gets thrown around a lot, and it doesn't have a specific definition. Um, it generally, 
when thinking about it, you can think about it as a reason for the troponin to be elevated. Um, and so you have leaking of the troponin out of the heart into the, the blood. And I would say that myocardial injury and troponin leak are generally synonymous. Um, however, troponin leak doesn't have a specific definition. We'll get back to that in a little bit. So we talked about myocardial injury. The second term I want to define is myocardial ischemia. So myocardial ischemia is a clinical symptoms or evidence of the heart not getting enough blood. That's not just the troponin. So myocardial ischemia includes ischemic symptoms. So crushing chest pain or shortness of breath, um, ischemic EKG, things that um, ST elevations, ST depressions or T wave inversions, an ischemic echo or, or new wall motion abnormalities or a positive stress test or a um, coronary angiogram with a thrombus found on it or an autopsy. So all of those things, having any one of those things can make it so that you have myocardial ischemia. Now myocardial ischemia is those symptoms or evidence on imaging. Myocardial injury is just having an elevated troponin. And then myocardial infarction, also referred to as MI, is the combination of those two things. So the combination of a myocardial injury with an elevated troponin and myocardial ischemia. And that is the evidence of symptoms or imaging evidence of um, changes to the heart. So that's an important thing to remember. Myocardial injury is just an elevated troponin. Acute myocardial ischemia is the symptoms or evidence on uh, imaging. And then myocardial infarction is you have to have both of those things. Um, acute myocardial infarctions can be broken down into STEMIs and NSTEMIs, but again, for a STEMI, you need both of these things, and an NSTEMI, you need both of these things. Now, it's important to think about this. The troponin, elevated troponin, is a myocardial injury, and that comes up with a big box of people. Not all of those people are having myocardial infarctions. And so a much smaller box are those that are having myocardial infarctions, which are elevated troponins plus ischemic symptoms. So that's an important thing to remember. Once you have established that they have a myocardial infarction, it's important to think about why they have a myocardial infarction. The first reason is that they have a new blockage in the arteries that supply their heart. And the second reason is that there's just not enough blood getting to the heart for how much um, the heart is moving. So a supply demand mismatch. So looking at this, the first type is a new plaque rupture. And what we think about that is that there's some plaque in the blood vessel to the heart that then breaks open with an rupture or an erosion and becomes occlusive. So completely blocks or nearly blocks the blood vessel. And so the, the heart muscle at the end of that is not getting enough blood and that is a type one myocardial infarction. The second type is a supply demand mismatch also known as demand ischemia many times where you just aren't getting enough blood to the heart. And that's not because of a new blockage, but because of something else. Either they have a, a prior blockage in their heart that then they're stressed in some way, um, or they're um, not getting enough blood to the heart because for example, they're really anemic and they're just not enough blood cells getting to the, to the heart. And so that is a supply demand mismatch. And there's many reasons for these. Many of the common reasons include hemorrhagic shock or anemia, sepsis, um, fast heart rhythms, respiratory failure, heart failure, or even hypertension. And so um, I'm actually going to skip past this graphic for the sake of time, but I think it's important when you're thinking about myocardial infarctions and myocardial injuries is um, I've tried to break it down into a simple flow sheet just to keep everything straight here, is that when you have an elevated troponin greater than your 99th percentile, that gets you into a category of, you know that you have at least a myocardial injury. And so the next important question is, is this something that's been chronic and a year ago their troponin was 50 and now it's 50 again? Or is this something that is new and that over the past few hours their troponin has been going up? If it's been chronic and stable, then they have a chronic myocardial injury. And some examples of that, as we touched on before, were chronic kidney disease or structural heart disease. If there is a change in their troponin, then the next question is, do they have ischemic symptoms or signs? And if they don't have ischemia, then it's an acute myocardial injury. And some examples of that would be myocarditis or heart failure um, or hypertension, those types of things. If they do have an elevated troponin, 
that's changing and they have ischemia, then they have a myocardial infarction. Those types could be a STEMI or an NSTEMI. But then the last question you got to ask yourself is what type of myocardial infarction is this? Is this demand ischemia or a supply demand mismatch because of hypertension and, um, or AFib, um, atrial fibrillation? Or is this because of a new plaque rupture and heart attack causing um, a heart, a myocardial infarction? Now, I wanted to, this is an important graphic, and I'm going to get back to this in a second, but I wanted to kind of bring this all home of what the survey that you guys are asked to fill out is, and that is um, this question of indicating what a patient suffered a myocardial injury post-procedure, including a troponin leak, demand ischemia, and STEMI or STEMI. And these are the, uh, the answer choices. Now I'm going to kind of put onto the right here uh, a translation of kind of some of the terminology that we use and something that we could think about. Um, and so a troponin leak is probably the same, kind of generally used in the same way as acute myocardial injury. So an elevated troponin without ischemia. Demand ischemia is a myocardial infarction, um, but secondary not to a new plaque rupture, but because of some stressor to the heart. An NSTEMI is a type one, NSTEMI and a STEMI is a STEMI. And so looking at this based on the flow sheet that we looked at before, the first question is acute myocardial injury falls into this category. A type two myocardial infarction or demand uh, myocardial infarction falls into this category here. And then a type one NSTEMI or STEMI falls into this category, just depends on what the EKG looks like. So with all that said, the main important points are the, the differences in these definitions. A myocardial injury is an elevated troponin. Myocardial ischemia is that evidence, signs or symptoms of um, uh, uh, lack of perfusion to the heart. And then myocardial infarction um, is the combination of the two of those things. And then the last question is, is this because of a new blockage in the heart or because of some stressor to the heart? With that, um, I would love to open it up, answer any questions, um, hear any thoughts, and um, go from there. Thank you, Dr. Hamilton. I, um, I'm, I appreciate you. I asked you to compare, you know, to take our question and then, you know, compare it with uh, the updated version. Um, um, and so I do appreciate that. And so it looks like we will be uh, revamping our um, myocardial injury uh, definition uh, in 2023. And yes, it was an excellent presentation. I just want to look in the chat to see if does anyone have any questions. I, I liked how you. I really, I don't have any questions. I liked how you broke it down. It like, it's like you know, um, made it really simple because I like I told you before. I had a lot of questions about well, what's troponin leak versus demand demand ischemia? And now we're basically talking about two very different things, you know. And I thought we were talking about the same thing, and it and it's just not true. Yeah, and I, I think that that is a, a, a common issue is that, you know, since 2018 and they came up with these definitions, things like troponin leak and demand ischemia are commonly used. And, you know, you'll see these in notes, even from cardiologists. And um, the difficulty is, is that those don't have necessarily clear definitions. And so, um, you know, these are, are kind of the newest definitions to try to, to eliminate that vague, you know, aspect of, you know, how do you define demand ischemia, troponin leak, what, what do those mean? Um, so ho hopefully this will be helpful understanding that this was a lot of information. And so, you know, referring back to this flow sheet might be a good way to think about this moving forward. 